Bardo, as you'll see from the agenda, is a Palestinian woman who fled with the rest of her family from Jerusalem in April 1948, when their home was taken by Israel. She was until recently a member of the Labour Party and has argued, for example, that the adoption of the IHRA working definition of anti-Semitism is itself something that stops Palestinians describing their own lived experience, let alone any political conclusions they may draw. So over to Dr. Radha Kami, please. Uh, hello, good morning. Good morning to everyone. And thank you for inviting me <coughs> to this important meeting. Um, now, I'm not sure that the term anti-Palestinian racism is actually appropriate. Um, and I, for reasons I'll explain. Um, you see, I think um, the, the, the um, hostility to the Palestinians stems or has to be understood in two ways. The first is to do with a very old uh, colonial attitude towards native peoples. Um, you know, when the Balfour Declaration was passed, um, it was quite explicit that the wishes of the native population were to be ignored. And this was totally acceptable at the time because it wasn't, uh, it wasn't so much racism saying, uh, you know, we have, it, we have a particular thing against Palestinians. It was to do with what I call colonial disdain. That is the natives of any country or land that the colonialists took over had no importance. They were really uh, worthless, actually. So their feelings, their needs, whatever, became totally irrelevant to the colonial project. So that's one sense. And of course, that includes other Arabs uh, as native peoples uh, and native peoples everywhere else. But the second way, which I think has to be, this has to be seen, is through the prism of Israel and its supporters. Uh, in other words, um, the, the question of Palestinian legitimacy that is the, legitim the legitimacy of the Palestinians as a people with their own um, history, uh, their own rights, had to be delegitimized right from the beginning and before. Uh, before I mean, from the beginning of the establishment of the State of Israel. That had to happen in order to give the Zionists legitimacy. And I honestly think this is absolutely crucial to understanding this story. So in other words, if you accord the Palestinians their own history, their own um, culture, um, their rights in the land of Palestine, then you in equal measure delegitimize the, the Zionist claim to Palestine. Uh, and the Zionist story um, and the Zionist um, claims uh, to, uh, to, to having any sort of a case. And I believe that this is the right way to see this because one notices this was done really fairly brutally very early on. And by that I mean the actual destruction of villages, Palestinian villages, uh, the denial of the right of return, so that, so that it was as if there were no Palestinians there. They certainly make sure there weren't going to be any Palestinians there. Uh, secondly, the changing of place names in Palestine. This is very well known. Uh, the, that's the way you rub out uh, the, the history that there had been a people there and they had their own names for their own cities and towns. Uh, and of course, that has gone on in the sense that whenever Palestinians have tried to find a voice to express their case, they have been sat on, literally, by a collusion between um, pro-Israel uh, forces, uh, uh, putting pressure on media, putting pressure on anybody who was uh, likely to give a platform to the Palestinians. So I think this is the way to see this. Now, if one continues with the point of view that I'm advocating, you see how over time, as Palestinians have gained more recognition, as they have 
um, being able to um, get themselves together, to form their own liberation organization, to have exile communities express their story um, and to have very um, articulate spokespeople. At the same time, Israel has increased and augmented its attempts to uh, rub out that story. And the way it's doing it now is to deny the Palestinian uh, case a platform, whether it's in universities, whether it's in political movements, wherever it might be, um, it's being denied the platform because, and I repeat again, to legitimize Palestinians is to delegitimize Israel and its project. Now, in that, I see that you see working in the IHRA definition of anti Semitism, which for the Palestinians is actually about uh, delegitimizing Palestinians, because it's to do with making out that if you criticize Israel, and which itself exists because the Palestinians have been rubbed out, um, if, you, if you criticize Israel, then you are anti Semitic. And of course, the second very powerful tool that Israel is using is the anti Semitism, the anti Semitism slur. So even if you uh, are brave enough and you want to go on helping Palestinians put forward their case, you will be labeled anti-Semitic. I should tell you that my own life exemplifies all that I told you. Uh, I came to, to England as a child. I, I grew up <clears throat> in, at a time <clears throat> before the 1967 war when the story of Palestine had virtually ceased to be told. Nobody even knew what Palestine was. It was quite amazing. So I found myself uh, uh, as, 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 somehow as non-existent, as if I didn't exist. Uh, and in the 70s, after, of course, the, six, the 1967 war, where, where Israel became so very, very heavily admired on this part of the world, um, uh, our story, our part of it, virtually vanished. And um, I well remember the 1970s when we tried so hard to fight back, to create um, uh, organizations we could forward our case, always with Israel hot on our heels in order to shut us up. Now, it, it did improve. There would be, it's, it's, it wouldn't be true to say that this had been the same as it was when I first arrived. Of course not. People know exactly who Palestinians are. Thanks to their own efforts, thanks to Palestinian efforts and friends like you that I'm talking to today and many other friends. That is how Palestine has come back on the world stage. At the same time, observe that Israel has redoubled and tripled its efforts to silence the Palestinians because it's so threatening to Israel. Hence, uh, um, all that I've spoken about, and just give you one more uh, example from my own personal experience. Um, I uh, had been invited to address a meeting of um, Hackney North uh, constituency, CLP, and I was asked to speak about Palestine. And in all innocence, I went along um, believing that what would be of interest to a Labour constituency would be the way that the Labour Party had used the faulty definition of anti-Semitism to silence everybody uh, and to silence any kind of other narrative other than Israel's. And I hadn't, I had barely started when the chair of the meeting became terribly agitated because she realized the drift of my talk and uh, very abruptly uh, said that I could not speak anymore and thank you very much <coughs> and goodbye. Um, and, and you know, I cannot tell you how shocking this was. I haven't forgotten it because it was just like a slap in the face. And it brought back immediately the 1970s when we used to try to uh, put forward our case. And the Zionists who were extremely vociferous then would elbow their way into meetings and heckle and shout. It was very difficult. Uh, it all brought it brought it all back in Hackney, and of course the other thing that I can tell you, which is my own experience, I have been expelled from the Labour Party. Um, why? 
because I was told that I was anti-Semitic. And what was the evidence? Um, they uh, brought out uh, tweets I'd sent, articles I'd written, all of them, all of them without exception, criticizing Israel. And that, of course, is not allowed uh, if you look at the, the way that I put it, that I, that I framed this, of course it can't be allowed. So I suppose, uh, what can I tell you? The, the, the takeaway lesson from this is that one doesn't give in to this kind of terrorism, because that's really what I call it. It's a terrorism over narrative. You don't give in to it. You continue to give the Palestinians their voice. They don't particularly need defending, you know, they're perfectly articulate, able to do it themselves. They just need the platform. So you continue to do that and uh, observe um, uh, the, 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 the contortions of the other side, They're desperately trying to shut our side up and getting themselves knotted in, in the process. Well, that's really all I need to say at this point, and thank you very much for listening.